Yo Gotti is one of the biggest rappers in the history of Memphis, but he's still connected to the brutal street drama in the city. Having street ties gave him a lot of clout in the industry, but it also got his own brother Big Juke killed. And today we're breaking down the wild story of how Juke got murdered right after his uncle's funeral. On January 13th, a cop with the Memphis PD was driving around Winchester Road when he heard shots going off out of nowhere. And when he pulled up to the scene outside of a restaurant in the area, there were two dudes on the ground with gunshot wounds. One of the guys was rushed to the hospital and listed in critical condition, but the other guy was identified as Big Juke and pronounced dead on the scene. According to the cops, it was a targeted hit and not just a random shooting. But right now, nobody has any idea about who pulled the trigger. Surveillance footage caught a white Ford Explorer with tinted windows leaving the area, but the cops don't have any suspects in the case yet. Big Juke and the other dude who got shot had just left the funeral for Juke and Gotti's uncle, Eric Bovan, aka Las Vegas Eric. Eric was a big time hustler back in the day who allegedly ran a massive drug ring that Gotti and Juke's aunts were affiliated with. Juke's aunt Janet married Eric and was allegedly helping him push weight. And in the 80s, his aunt Linda got caught up in the drug case because she was allegedly working with him too. Juke's uncle Eric and his crew were allegedly making millions by moving drugs between California and Memphis. According to the cops, they ran the whole thing out of a nightclub. And for a while, they had the game in Memphis on lock. But when you're moving that much weight, it's only a matter of time before the feds catch on. And in 89, Juke's uncle Eric and his crew caught a massive case, and one of his homies flipped and started working with the FBI. There aren't a lot of details about Eric's drug ring back then, but there is some public info from Juke's Aunt Linda because of an appeal she made to the court. According to the documents, Eric was the boss of a cocaine ring that was bringing drugs into Memphis from Los Angeles. They was using Aunt Linda's crib as a stash house, and Uncle Eric's homie Earl Woods testified that he went with Uncle Eric and Aunt Janet to the crib one day, and Eric's wife Linda handed them a sack with 25 to 40 k in it. Eric's homie Earl also told the court that another day, he gave Janet a bag with 7 kilos of cocaine in it, and she told him she was taking it to Linda's house. Linda was allegedly pushing a lot of weight for Eric, but when the cops raided her crib, they only found a loaded revolver and a shoebox with trace amounts of cocaine in it. Aunt Linda caught an 84-month sentence for drug conspiracy charges, while Uncle Eric got hit with 10 years and his whole operation fell apart. Eric wasn't the only drug lord affiliated with Juke and Gotti though. But before we get into that, let's take a look at why Gotti's beef with Young Dolph might have something to do with the whole situation. Back in the day, Dolph and Gotti were cool, and Dolph was allegedly even the plug for one of Gotti's brothers before he hopped in the booth and started rapping. Dolph got involved with the streets early. Both of his parents were on crack and he needed a way to support himself but eventually he decided to switch up how he was moving and got involved with the rap game. Dolph started passing out CDs all over Memphis just so people could hear his music. At first he was handing them out for free, but not before long his name was buzzing in the city and he was starting to make money off of rap. By the time Dolph got into the game, Yo Gotti was already a legend in Memphis. He started dropping music all the way back in 96 and in 2012, he decided to level up and start his own label called Collective Music Group or CMG. Gotti had the label for a couple years and still hadn't signed anyone to it. But after Dolph dropped a hot mixtape with Gucci Mane, Gotti reached out and offered him a deal. Dolph was all about breaking into the industry by himself though. By the time Gotti wanted to sign him, Dolph already invested over a mill into his career and didn't want to ride anyone else's way. From the outside, it looked like everything was still cool between them. But there was drama behind the scenes that led to Gotti's team allegedly trying to kill Dolph more than once. After Dolph turned Gotti's deal down, Gotti signed another Memphis rapper named Black Youngster. Before we get into how Black Youngster allegedly dumped 100 rounds into Dolph's SUV, we gotta take a look at how it all started and why Big Juke's murder might be connected to the situation. Back in 2016, Dolph finally released his debut album called King of Memphis. Yo Gotti had been calling himself the King of Memphis for years, like on the track BMF Memphis when he rapped, I think I'm Yo Gotti, King of Memphis. I'm the youngest motherfucker who ever did it. Seven digits, I'm still strapped. Go against the king and get your ass kidnapped. According to rumors, Gotti was pressed about Dolph calling his album King of Memphis, and that's when all the drama started. Dolph took the first shot on Twitter and said, Bro, I went from being my number one fan and wanting to sign me to being my biggest hater. Gotti didn't respond to the tweet, but his artist Black Youngster said he was gonna smack the shit out of Dolph if he saw him on the street. After Black Youngster called him out, Dolph hopped on Instagram and this Gotti was sending his artist to fight him. Dolph aired him out for still being mad that he didn't sign with him, and also claimed that Gotti was pressed that he was still rocking with Gucci Mane. Gucci Mane and Yo Gotti were tight back in the day, 
drop a couple tracks together that had the streets going crazy. Then they linked up in the studio for two full collab tapes. Fans were rocking with the music heavy and wanted to hear more, but then they split ways out of nowhere. Gucci was promoting his Trap God album and set the release date for October 17th or 1017. 1017 is the name of his label, so it was a big deal for Gucci. But then news broke that Gotti's project was dropping on the same day. Gotti said he ain't know they were both dropping albums that day, but he was hyped about it when he heard the news. According to Gotti, he reached out to Gucci because he was thinking, man, we're about to shut it down, but Gucci never replied. Gotti still didn't know there was any drama. But then Gucci tweeted, Why would another artist put their mixtape out on 1017 if they ain't Brick Squad? You ain't me, the hashtag trap guy. Gotti tried to reach out again and even changed the release date of his project. But apparently, that wasn't the only issue Gucci had with him. Most rap fans know about the famous beef between Gucci and Jeezy that almost got Gucci killed. It started out as industry drama, but then the situation got so bad that Jeezy sent his homies into Gucci's crib and Gucci ended up killing one of them in self defense. Around the same time the release date drama was going on, Gotti had just hopped on a track with T.I. and Jeezy, and Gucci was obviously pressed about Gotti linking up with his op like that. Then Gucci dropped the track Birds of a Feather and rapped, I used to fuck with Gotti till he turned into a bust. I did a song with T.I., but the nigga's still a sucker. Gucci Man and Young Dolph is always tight, and after Dolph died, he dropped the track Long Live Dolph and rapped, R.I.P. to Dolph, Long Long Live the Legend. From Memphis to the Six, they felt you in the bricks. The day you died, it broke my heart. A day I won't forget. One thing you know, you're missed. But even if the drama with Dolphin and Gotti started because Dolph stayed cool with Gucci while they were beefing, it didn't take long for the situation to get violent. One of Black Youngster's early hits was a track called Heavy, and Dolph said a shot at Black Youngster on the track Ready when he rapped, All of my niggas, they ready. Y'all some pussies, you scared. All on the internet telling, trying to have a real nigga jelly. This shit around my neck so heavy. I'ma keep dripping sauce, spaghetti. Dolph also took shots at Gotti with the bar. Any nigga that record when it's time for gangster shit, he the police. And I fucked your boss man baby mama, same hotel for four weeks. Never sent a little boy to take care of grown man business. If I was you, I'd be mad at me too, so I ain't tripping. Gotti still didn't respond, but Black Youngster dropped the track Shake Some and said, Young Dolph Thornton, wanna play, ho? I'm on tour with the K, ho. Mac 11, Smith and Wesson, extend the clip, 100 rounds on the Draco. How the fuck you the king of Memphis? You ain't from the city, you from Chicago. Fuck boy, you better lay low. Killers move when I say so. Dolph wasn't too worried about Black Youngster and never clapped back. But then a few months later, he dropped the track Play With Your Bitch and there Gotti out with the line, Don't play with me, ho Gotti, you a ho, man. You went from my biggest fan to my biggest hater. Begging me to sign with you, but I had too much paper. And they said them pussy niggas on your team are in your draws. They say you make the pussy ass niggas call you boss, but they can't call you king because that's dope. He also allegedly took a shot at Juke on the same track when he raps. Still that same nigga that used to front your big brother. Found out he a bitch too, now I call him your big sister. Nothing happened at first, but then Dolph took the disrespect to a whole new level with the video for Play With Your Bitch. He hired a Yo Gotti lookalike and stole a girl from him in the video. And the day after it dropped, Gotti's crew allegedly dumped 100 shots at Dolph's SUV. Dolph was touring in North Carolina, and before one of his shows, someone pulled up and sprayed over 100 bullets into his whip. Luckily, Dolph didn't get hurt because his whip was bulletproof. Dolph still pulled up to his event and performed Play With Your Bitch for his fans. Black Youngster and his homies got booked for trying to kill Dolph, but eventually the charges got dropped because there wasn't enough evidence and nobody was working with the cops. That ain't stop Black Youngster from taking more shots at Dolph and accusing him of snitching. On the track Bulletproof, he raps, If you got love for me, can you at Young Dolph and tell him don't show up? I'm just saying, homie, why you give them people statements? Why you rap about that shit so your album would go crazy? Niggas do anything for the album sales. And you lost your bet? If you bet that I'll tell. Black Youngster wasn't the only one making music about the situation though. Surviving the shooting gave Dolph a lot of attention. And in 2017, he dropped the album Bulletproof and sent a message through his track list. If you read each song on the album in order, it says, 100 shots in Charlotte, but I'm bulletproof, so fuck them. That's how I feel. I'm so real. I pray for my enemies. I'm everything you want to be. Shaking my head. That wasn't the only time Dolph almost died over the Gotti beef though. And what happened next makes even more people think his brother Juke's death might be connected to the whole beef. A few months after Dolph's whip was shot, he was in Los Angeles at the same time as Gotti. According to rumors, Dolph found out where Gotti was staying and tried to press him. 
and that's when a fight broke out and one of Gotti's homies shot Dolph three times. The dude who shot Dolph was charged, but he dodged the case because nobody in Dolph's crew would work with the cops. After the shooting in LA, the beef seemed to chill out for a while. Dolph and Gotti were doing their own thing and weren't sending shots back and forth. Fans were hoping that Dolph would left all the drama behind. But then in November 2021, young Dolph was tragically shot and killed while buying cookies at a shop in Memphis. Rumors were flying that Gotti and his crew had something to do with the murder. And one of Dolph's homies even claimed that Juke put a hit out on Dolph. Because these folks got some, had something to do with it, bro. These folks that Juke put a hit out. You know what I'm saying, boo? Nah, I it, bro. I need to say this. Don't say that. Nigga, tell the truth. It took a while for the cops to book anyone for his death. But at first, it didn't look like it was connected to Juke and Gotti at all. In 2022, the cops booked Justin Johnson and Cornelia Smith for the murder. Nobody knew why they wanted to kill Dolph. But then a few months later, a dude named Hernandez Govan was arrested too and changed everything. Govan was allegedly one of the biggest drug lords in Memphis and had ties to Gotti and Juke. He was also connected to the music industry through his daughter, Lotto Cash Desto, who was killed in Houston a year after Dolph died. Desto was at a stoplight behind another whip when two shooters hopped out of the car in front of her and started letting off shots. Her friend was rushed to the hospital with a gunshot wound, but Desto was tragically pronounced dead at the scene. Two dudes have been arrested for the shooting, but nobody knows why Desto was killed yet. There's a lot of rumors about the situation though, so let's break down why some people think it's related to Juke and Gotti's beef with Young Dolph. After Lotto Cash Desto died, her dad, Govan, made a post on Facebook apologizing to Desto saying he cursed her with his lifestyle. Back then, nobody thought it had anything to do with Young Dolph, but that all changed after Desto's dad, Govan, was charged with putting the hit out on Dolph. None of this has been confirmed, so it's just street rumors as of right now. But some people think Dolph's homies have been sliding to get back for his murder, and Desto got caught up in the situation. Her dad, Govan, was charged just a month after Desto was killed, and there's a good chance the people in Memphis already knew he was involved way before the news ever broke. There's still no evidence that Gotti and Juke had anything to do with Govan sending shooters at Dolph, but we do know that they have ties to each other, so it's a possibility. All that's available right now are rumors though. When the murder trial for Dolph starts, there's going to be all kinds of new info coming out because one of the dudes involved already flipped and agreed to testify against everyone else in the case. A lot of people think Big Juke's murder has something to do with the Dolph beef. But there's also a rumor going around that he was taken out by someone close to him. The last post Juke made on Instagram was a photo of himself with the caption, They don't want to face you, they want to snake you. Stay alert to stay alive. Watch your back at all times. It's not clear if Juke and Gotti really have ops inside their own group. But the post has a lot of people thinking that the killers were someone close to Juke. What's really crazy about the theory is the fact that Gotti's mother was allegedly in the whip with Juke and his homie when the shooting happened. It's just a rumor right now, but some people close to the situation are saying that Gotti's mom had to run out of the whip when the shots started going off and almost got hit too. It's not clear who killed Juke yet, but whoever pulled the trigger really wanted to take him out. They slid on him in broad daylight in a public area full of security cameras. So obviously they were willing to take a big risk just to get him. There's not a lot of info about what really went down yet, and Gotti hasn't spoken on the situation. But tap in for updates while the story develops.